Welcome to Movie Caps. Today, I will show you a psychological thriller from 2019, titled Joker. Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The plot is set in 1981 in Gotham City. Arthur Fleck works for a firm named Ha Ha's, a clown for hire. He suffers from severe sadness, but finds some solace in performing for others, and attempting to make others laugh. He's been given the responsibility of promoting a store, by dancing and waving a sign around. The sign is seized by a gang of punks on one of these occasions, leading Arthur to follow them down an alley. They slam the sign in his face, and then kick him hard while he's down. Gotham is dealing with crime, unemployment, and poverty at this age. Arthur sees a social worker for his medicines and chronic mental health problems. A tiny child stares at Arthur on the way home on the bus. Arthur amuses the youngster by making ridiculous expressions, but his mother urges him to leave him alone. Arthur begins to laugh excessively and hysterically. When his mother asks him, he offers her a note explaining that he suffers from a mental illness, that leads him to laugh in this manner. Arthur comes home to a high-rise apartment complex with his sick mother, Penny, where they both dwell. They sit and watch a TV discussion program, with host Murray Franklin after supper. Arthur fantasizes about appearing on the show and catching Murray's eye. Arthur charms the audience and Murray in his daydream, by informing them that he looks after his mother. Murray connects with Arthur, and invites him up on stage in front of the audience for a warm embrace. Penny used to work for Thomas Wayne, and is now enamored with a millionaire, whom she has been writing to in an attempt to improve their living circumstances. After hearing about the mugging event at Ha Ha's, Arthur's co-worker Randall gives him a revolver for protection. Because weapons are prohibited at work, Arthur is both hesitant and relieved to get such a present, but he quickly gains confidence after acquiring the weapon. Soon after, he is approached by his cold and callous employer, who chastises him for missing the sign, and deducts the sum from his pay. Arthur simply answers with a sour smile. Arthur meets and falls in love with one of his neighbors, Sophie Dummond, a single mother. She converses with him pleasantly on topics that he can relate to. However, despite attempting to make an impact on her, he comes across as uncomfortable and strange in her presence. He spends a day tracking her at one point. Later, she visits his apartment, and inquires whether he was following her, he acknowledges that he was, but she seems unconcerned. He invites her to see him perform at a stand-up comedy concert. She is hesitant but agrees. Arthur arrives at the comedy club for his show, his anxiety fills him, and he unwittingly finds himself laughing so hard, that he can hardly talk as a coping technique. He then launches into his routine, which isn't that amusing. Sophie is in the crowd, and she looks to be the only one laughing at Arthur's jokes. This provides him with the comfort he requires, to continue to laugh despite his internal anguish. Later, Arthur visits a children's hospital to perform as a clown for the kids. He had brought his rifle with him, which he dropped on the floor. Arthur's employer subsequently chastises him for it. Arthur begs his supervisor for a second opportunity, but he refuses, and is fired on the spot. To top it off, Randall puts Arthur under the bus, by stating Arthur obtained the gun on his own. Arthur notices three inebriated young Wall Street types, working for Wayne Enterprises, harassing a woman on the metro train journey home. Arthur mistakenly starts laughing, attracting the attention of the males, while the woman prudently departs the car. The men approach Arthur, and make fun of him and his laughs before beating him up. In self-defense, Arthur fights back, but they gang up and brutally beat him to the ground. After having had enough, Arthur draws his revolver and shoots two of them in self-defense, before pursuing the final man off of the train and executing him on the stairwell. Arthur withdraws into a nearby public men's lavatory, stunned by what he has just done. He discovers a force rising within him after a minute of furious thinking, and he begins to dance by himself. He sees himself in the dirty mirror as a damaged, smeared, and still strong clown at this point, and he begins to accept it. He puts the pistol away, and returns to the apartment building where he first meets and kisses Sophie. As word of the three killings spreads, some perceive it as a targeted attack on the rich, while others defend it. Thomas Wayne speaks out against it, referring to the lower class as clowns, a symbol that they gladly accept. Arthur cleans out his locker at Ha Ha's the next day, but not before confronting Randall, about betraying him and destroying the time-punching machine. He then walks away, feeling elated and liberated. According to news sources, Clown rioters are causing havoc in the city and criticizing the wealthy. Arthur realizes he has unintentionally created this, and begins to realize his actual potential, which makes him really happy. One of Penny's letters to Thomas is subsequently discovered by Arthur, indicating that Arthur is Thomas' son. Arthur visits Wayne Manor, where he meets Bruce Wayne, 
a young man. During this meeting, he also attacks Alfred, but regains composure and goes away. He then goes to a public art theater to confront Thomas Wayne, who reveals that Arthur was adopted and that Penny was delusional. Arthur starts laughing hysterically, which makes Thomas go on the defensive, and he ends up punching Arthur in the face, then has him removed from the premises. Later Arthur goes home and bangs his head on the refrigerator, in a fit of depression. Due to information that the suspect was wearing clown makeup, two police investigators, Burke and Garrity come to Arthur's apartment the next day, to confront him about the train killings. They know Arthur lost his job earlier that day. Arthur vehemently denies any participation and orders the detectives to go. Penny becomes unwell, and is admitted to the hospital not long after. Sophie sits at Arthur's side, while he attends to his mother's needs. Arthur notices a clip from Murray's stand-up performance on Murray's TV program while in the hospital, but he is disappointed to learn that Murray only did it to humiliate Arthur. Later, Arthur receives a call from a representative for Murray's program. Arthur hesitantly accepts the invitation to come as a guest. Arthur chooses to commit himself in front of the live audience, after watching prior interviews on the comedy program, in the hopes of making them laugh. Seeking hard proof, Arthur decides to go to Arkham Asylum, to find out about his heritage, and he discovers that Thomas was indeed right, not only was he adopted, but he had been abused by Penny and her boyfriend, which had probably led to him developing the laughing condition. Angered, he goes back to the hospital, tells Penny how his life was a comedy, and then smothers her to death. Arthur then goes back home and breaks into Sophie's apartment, who begs him to leave, it turns out all the time he had spent with Sophie was just in his head. Arthur then prepares to go on the Murray show and paints his face white. Before he has to go, he is visited by a former co-worker, a dwarf called Gary and Randall. They offer condolences, but it turns out, that they are trying to cover their own tracks in the murder of the three men. Arthur gets angry and stabs Randall but lets Gary go. As he leaves to go to the show, he is chased by two police and, they go into a subway, where other Gotham citizens are dressed like clowns, after being inspired by the murders. The cops accidentally shoot a civilian, and a riot begins. Arthur reaches the studio, where the Murray show is recorded, and asks for himself to be introduced as the Joker. On the show, after a heated debate with Murray, he shouts, you get what you deserve and shoots him, causing the audience to panic. We then see a shot of Arthur being taken in a car, as chaos engulfs Gotham City. Meanwhile, the Waynes leave a theater, and are followed in an alley by a Joker, who used Arthur's line to shoot both husband and wife, leaving the child alive. The car carrying Arthur crashes into an ambulance, as the clown kills the policeman and frees Arthur. He stands on the car, and rubs blood from his nose onto his mouth, as he revels in the glory. Sometime later, Arthur is locked up in Arkham Asylum, where he is visited by a new social worker, he tells her that he wants to tell her a joke, but she would not understand. Later he comes out of the room, with bloody footprints, as he is chased by orderlies. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.